Hey there, I'm Mehdi. Welcome to this presentation. I'm a master student in uh, Concordia University in Montreal, and uh, I'm here to present you my recent work uh, with title Red Black Coin in DeFi Workshop. And it's a joint work with uh, my supervisors, Dr. Clark and Dr. Mannon. Okay. 2008 economic recession had a big lesson for us. Don't make financial instrument too complicated to assess its risk. Now, what we have as DAI right now contains lots of fallback mechanisms, for example, like uh, liquidation, debt auction, and fees that makes it very complex. So people don't truly understand the risk behind it. And we have uh, evidence for it uh, that happened on last year on Black Thursday. All these bring the idea to our mind uh, to first make the simplest non-custodial stable coin and analyze this uh, simplest version and then brainstorm to find other alternative and uh, design choices for it. There are a bunch of real world projects out there on Ethereum blockchain uh, like DAI, Maker, UMA, USDX, or Synthetic USD that uh, tries to bring uh, real world assets like fiat currencies or shares or commodities into uh, the Ethereum blockchain. And they shared a core mechanism uh, that they used to bring in these assets on chain. And what is this core idea? Uh, they first pick an underlying asset like Ether, and uh, the users must deposit some uh, amount of underlying asset into these dApps. And then the dApps will uh, split the underlying asset, the deposited asset into two parts. The first part, which is going to pe peg the, on the targeted asset, we call it black coin. And the other part, uh, which, going, which is going to uh, absorb the risk, the whole risk of the system is red coin. Uh, and for example, in DAI example, uh, DAI coins are like black coins and CDP or walls are like red coins. Uh, but in these real world uh, examples, they implemented other mechanisms as, as well like uh, liquidation or fees or global shutdown, for example, in DAI. But as we said before, we want to remove and forget about all these uh, ad hoc mechanisms and just uh, analyze the simplest version. Why we want DAI without liquidation in our analysis is because there is no uh, real good study on the core mechanism and other studying a uh, project or uh, working in conjunction with, uh, with liquidation. And uh, actually they thought liquidation is the building block of these project. Uh, and the other reason is that liquidation adds complexity. And so we cannot assess the risk uh, very good. And uh, the, the major question that we have is do we need liquidation? Is there any other choices uh, instead of using liquidation or not? Back to our simplest version. And uh, if we assume that we want to target US dollar, so our system is like a stable coin, uh, the user will put uh, 1.5 amount of uh, ETH in equivalent amount of ETH in dollar. And our DAP will split it into black coin, which uh, supposed to be one dollar, and the red coin, which which is going to be fifty cents. And, but this is for just right now. What about the future? Uh, for example, if the price of ETH changes tomorrow, uh, how can we price black coin or red coin? For the pricing, we should have two assumptions first. Uh, the first one, as we said before, we have no liquidation, no attack mechanism. And uh, the second part is that uh, we have perfect liquidity for the markets of red coin and black coin. In this case, the uh, formula that we have is that uh, the 
value of the deposited ETH in dollar should be equal to the value of black coins plus value of red coins. And in our case, um, we assume that black coins should be one dollar. Let's think about different scenarios uh, of the ether price. If the price of ether uh, stays the same, then th that's okay. And black coin will be priced like one dollar, and the red coin is going to be fifty cents. But what about our scenarios? It, if, for example, the price of ETH goes up a bit, uh, that, that's okay for black coin, it, it will be $1. But uh, the red coin will goes up more than ether because of the formula that, that we showed. Well, if the price of ether goes up a lot, black coin will be $1, but red coin goes up a lot, a lot. Uh, and it seems like red coins are leverage positions. What about the scenario in which uh, the ETH price goes down a bit? In this scenario, uh, the black coin is still worth $1, but our red coin goes down a lot because, because uh, it's the leverage position. In the case that ETH price goes down a lot, our red coin will worth zero dollar in this scenario, and our black coin worth below one dollar. So it breaks the book and uh, it's not stable anymore. Okay, this figure summarizes all the previous scenarios. And uh, if you see the second dotted line in the graph, it is where we have started and uh, it's like the middle column of the tables that we had. If Alice buys ETH with her 50 cent on the starting day, her exposure to the price changes is like purple graph that you can see in the figure. By comparing purple graph with the red graph, which is for red coin, it is obvious that buying a red coin is like a leverage position on ETH. If we move to the left of the graph, at some point, our red coin will worth zero and our black coin uh, price will start to go below $1 and it will break the buck. The question here is, if I have a black coin, how much it will worth a year later? Is it $1, 90 cent or 60 cent? It is obvious that we need a model for ETH to USD price to respond to this question. We use geometric Brownian motion model to find future possibilities of Ether price. This model has been used for modeling stock prices in Black Scholes model, which is a traditional finance uh, model. It is good to mention that we are not the first work that uses GBM for modeling ETH prices. And we also used Monte Carlo simulation to find different possibilities and different outcomes. Running these models on closing prices for uh, a thousand days before September 18, uh, 2020, gives us this new and sigma, and we confirm these numbers with other projects and uh, with Python code and Mathematica. The left figure is Monte Carlo simulation on, uh, of ETH prices for next 100 days after September 18. And the right figure is the histogram of final prices of ETH in USD. In fact, we call it, uh, all the output of all 10,000 simulation on day 100 and make a histogram out of it. Uh, it is not normal distribution as we expected. We've changed the maturity date of the black coin and for 100 days for all possibilities uh, of the black coin, we had average value of 94 cents. Uh, and then we changed the maturity date for 200 days. And for 200 days, it changed to uh, 85 cents. 
and for one year later, it was 80 cents. It means that the risk it falls out of the money increases the more time you gave it. There are some other parameters that we changed to see the impact on the result of black coins price. Uh, we changed collateral factor as well. Uh, what is collateral factor? Collateral factor is the ratio between the deposited amount and the target price. In our case, we deposited uh, $1.5 of ETH and the target price was $1. And so this collateral factor was 1.5. What if we change the deposit into $2 for $1, the collateral factor will be two. In our analysis, we change the C factor and find the impact on the black coins price in day 100. Uh, for 1.5, the average value of all outcome results of the simulation for black coin was 94 cents. And when we changed the, it to 1.1, the expected value changed to 86 cents. And for 2C factor, uh, it changed to 98 cents. In the next part of our paper, we add uh, back the kind of things that DAI has, but without doing exactly what DAI does. Instead of thinking about uh, what DAI does, we think about why uh, they do it. And then we have a brainstorm to find other alternatives instead of, for example, like uh, liquidation or other ad hoc mechanisms that I used. Uh, we have four categories and four design choices. Uh, uh, the first one is fungibility and the other one is redemption under collateralization and su supply and demand that we will go through them uh, in the next slide. The first design choice is fungibility. And we have two tokens here, red coin and black coin, and they could be fungible or not. The designer have three different choices to deal with the fungibility here. Uh, the first one is to forego fungibility and have each coin pair like uh, its own individual contract. It's like forward contract in traditional finance. The second choice is to pull the collateral of the red coins. Uh, so that each black coin is a claim against the pool of red coins. However, it is unfair a bit because losses are democratized to all black coin holders. The third option is to additionally offer red coins fungibility. Since red coin have variable uh, collateral, two conditions uh, need to be added to the transfer function. Uh, the first one is to uh, is that red coin losses, uh, red coins less than uh, specified collateral is not transferable. And the second one is red coins with more than a specified collateral will transfer the surplus to the sellers. The next design decision is a policy for redeeming the collateralized ETH. Red black coin could mature on a pre-specified day, precisely like how we uh, have future contracts in traditional finance. Alternatively, we can uh, the, the red black coins could be redeemed at any time on demand by black coin holder, red coin holder, uh, either or both. The second and the third option is uh, like options contract in uh, US style. When the ETH to USD exchange rate drops enough, then under collateralization is possible uh, that happened to the system and the system could do nothing and left black coin holders take the risk or uh, it is the, the other option is to liquidate the red coin holders that are at risk of being under collateralized like what we have in uh, DAI and MakerDAO. And uh, liquidation itself cannot incentivize the holder to top up, top up uh, and uh, it needs punishment on top of it. Uh, a stable coin accompanied by a reputation system may reduce the risk of under collateralization, but it cannot mitigate it. And a different approach is to obtain uh, insurance or financial coverage for the event of a decline in the price of ETH. 
And the last approach uh, is bail out any losses through sales of uh, a secondary token, like for example, what we have in MakerDAO uh, in debt auction uh, and selling the Maker token to bail out the uh, losses. The last design decision is to uh, think about how to control supply and demand in our system. A non-interventionist approach would let the red coin and black coin price float freely. Uh, but an alternative is to further stabilize prices and control demand and supply of the red and black coins using fees and rate. Uh, for example, DAI does this by uh, setting stability fee and DAI saving rates. In this paper, we distill complex a stablecoin system into one of their core primitives, the red black coin, and provide a detailed study of its financial characteristic. And then we had a brainstorm to find other possible extension and uh, the design choices. For the future work, it would be useful to have a research result on the most suitable financial model for ETH to USD price, like for example, a Drift Diffusion or Garch. And uh, it, is, it could be valuable to find other uh, alternatives to DAI that, that is more understandable or a DAI with fungible red coins. Thank you for listening to my presentation. And if you have any question or suggestion, you are welcome to send me email or direct me on Twitter. Uh, thank you again and have a good day.